I have published uh, two weeks ago this circuit, a precision oscillator to test IF coils and also other coils. And here I um, have used a field effect transistor and I've developed the whole circuit further to this circuit and make it much more universal so that you can test also coils from on other frequencies. Uh, the most important thing to change this circuit into a more um, uh, general usage oscillator is to change the two capacitors that, na that are now in the middle of the screen, 1 nanofarad and 120 picofarad. When you take other values for these caps you can go to lower frequencies and I could go even as far as 30 kilohertz by changing the capacitors. So I had to use a rotary switch with uh, six uh, contacts and two uh, central contacts and that circuit is here now. Here you see the same circuit but now with a rotary switch and we can switch two capacitors at the same time. One capacitor that goes to the gate and one the, the other capacitor that bridges the coil and goes to ground. This is the way uh, I used the rotary switch. It has two times six contacts and all the capacitors are mounted in a kind of ring. And with this device you can get very good insight in radio coils. Because you connect now your coil to the place where the arrows are, you, you switch the 30 picofarad capacitor in and then you turn the knob and when you turn the knob here you uh, can make the oscillator to oscillate on different frequencies and these frequencies are related to the frequency band where your coil works at its best, so it has the best performance. Now I've connected here again a 455 kilohertz filter. You're going to look now on the scope when the whole circuit starts to oscillate. That's here. And now we read on the counter and we see that this uh, 455 kilohertz filter oscillates on 450 kilohertz. And of course that's never very precise. Perhaps there's a um, uh, deviation from say 10 kilohertz or 50 kilohertz. You can also um, move the switch to the upper position and then we go to 452 kilohertz. That's, that's normal. Less capacitance uh, to which uh, bridged to the coil. So I think it's a useful device. This is could be uh, a problem to make. But here you see how I've made it. It's in fact very simple. That the double rotary switch and all the caps are soldered in a kind of ring. Uh, the two central contacts from the switch here go to this point, the coil, and here every all the, the capacitors are soldered together, and here also, here they go to the gate. And here they go to ground. So here they go. This part goes to ground. This part here goes to the gate. And um, it's very uh, simple now to do measurements. So let's take for instance this coil. And there are a lot more coils that you all can test on which frequency they work at its best, they perform at its best. We have to take in account that there is here a 30 picofarad capacitor bridge to that unknown coil. I put down the camera now, I connect now one of the coils, the coil that I've showed, 
And uh, at first, of course, I have to get the whole circuit into oscillation. Well, that's now the case. This was the card that I've showed. Here we see that it oscillates. The switch is now on position 5. And here you can see which position that is and uh, which capacitors are used. Now we switch to position 6. Now it oscillates. Sorry, it oscillates. We look here. We see that it's on 3.0 megahertz. We go to a higher position, position 6. It still oscillates. We read it is very strange. Oh, the counter is disconnected. We read now it is 3.7. One position back, still oscillation, 3.4. Position 4, no oscillation at all. So these two positions we can see that there's oscillation and on the counter we can read which frequencies that are. And um, that's the frequency band where this coil works. With a 50, 50 picofarad capacitor bridge to it. When you bridge the coil here with another cap, uh, you can correct the, the waveform somewhat and you will see that you can go to lower frequencies. Another coil under test. Um, this is an old choke coil, as far as I could see. A choke coil, the black one here, on position 5. There is oscillation. We see a kind of hill, low frequency. We see that it oscillates on 257 kilohertz. Now to position 6. It doesn't work any longer. Back to position 5. Position 4. 129 kilohertz. Position 3. 48 kilohertz. And the lowest frequency that you can range, can get with this coil, is approximately 46 kilohertz. So, uh, of course, you must always take into account that on the position where the oscillation is at its optimum, so I think here, approximately here, uh, that's the best um, frequency, uh, the position where this coil uh, performs at its best. Finally, another coil. I've used this coil many times. Very big coil on a toilet roll. This coil. I've demonstrated many times. At the moment, it works on 541 kilohertz. When I go to position 6, still oscillation. Position 5. Or three. Position six again, the highest frequency that you can get with the coil at this moment, 1.1 megahertz. Five seven seven or five four one kilohertz. Three four four kilohertz. That means that with this coil you can uh, reach, make radio circuits in uh, in this frequency band, say from 344 up to 1.2 uh, megahertz, 344 kilohertz, 1.2 megahertz. And you can, by switching this, you can get very quickly an indication where your coil works at its optimum. Thanks for watching.